you for your son who came to take our place. He died for us so that we wouldn't have to. And he came that we may have abundant life. Yes. And he rose again on the third day to, that we may be justified through him. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, for he is our teacher and he is our guide. And I thank you for him. But Father, most of all, I thank you for your love. For you loved us so much that you would sacrifice your son to bring, us, to bring your family back. Yeah. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you for our pastor. I thank you, Father, that he is being protected by your holy angels, mm -hmm. that you will bring him back to us safe and sound. And I thank you for that, Father. Father, I thank you for my opportunity to speak your word amongst your children. Yes, and Holy Spirit, again, this is not me, it's you. You do whatever you want to do, and I will be your mouthpiece. Amen. I ask the Father that you give us ears that we make hear clearly and concisely, and give me a tongue that I may do the same. In Jesus' name, give thanks. Amen. Okay, we are still on my subject. Of one thing is needful. Let's go to our opening scriptures. Go to Luke ten Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her home, into her house. And she sat at, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him saying and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. That always strikes me strange. It's, she's telling Rabbi, tell her. Not would you tell her, but tell her to come help me. And Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. One thing is needful. The one thing is needful that he's talking about is the words that were coming out of his mouth. That was the needful thing. All this other stuff is extra. Because... Martha could have been, and I believe that Martha was originally sitting there listening to Jesus, but Martha let herself be distracted by, we got to prepare the meal, we got to do this, we got to do that, and Mary just said, no, I'm not moving from here. If he's speaking, I'm listening. Um, well, it should be the same way for us, is not to be distracted by the things. And some of them are legitimate, and they have their place. I mean, those that are, you know, and I'm talking to our Internet uh, audience out there too, those that are still working, you're supposed to go to work. But there is a balance between work and God. Mm -hmm. And the balance is this way, this being God. Then work. God comes first. Um, a few lessons ago, I said, well, what's your priority? Who do you wake up to, and who do you go to bed to? Mm -hmm. Everything else will fall in line. If you will wake up to God, go to bed to God, and let, the, let, the, let everything in the middle take care of itself. 
if you will, and I'm, I mean, I'm learning the strength of this more and more. If you will start your day, now some people, when you pray, it's your business. But I'm saying this. If you will start your day with prayer mm-hmm. and end your day with the word, that is one dynamite tandem. And then through the day, you have the opportunity to sit there and pray in the spirit while you're working. Come on, Quietly to yourself. You don't have to be talking all out loud. Uh, Mike, you want to start the clock? Um, you don't have to be talking all out loud, but you can be quietly to yourself praying in the spirit. Amen. I believe that, that somebody asked Smith Wickleworth, how often do you pray? He says, not very long. But I go very long, I don't go very long without prayer either. Amen. You can pray, you can pray in the spirit throughout the day. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm practicing that, I'm learning to practice that because your flesh don't want to do it. Your flesh wants to forget all about that. As you're, as you're sitting there praying in the spirit and you're walking, you're doing your work or whatever, this and that. I mean, sometimes I'm doing it when I'm road testing the customer's car or whatever. I'm, I'm just praying in the spirit and having a good time, but... If you don't, if you're not watchful of it, you'll do all those things and not pray in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And praying in the spirit, you're connecting, you're connecting with God. It's your private hotline to God. Mm-hmm. You can you can be affecting things that you don't even know what you're affecting. Right. I mean, I make it my business to pray in the spirit because I don't want, I don't know what I'm going to say when I come up here. Amen. But. Because I prayed in the spirit, it can come out of me. Yeah. You know, we have, an, we have an advantage over the world by far. We got God personally mm-hmm. talking to us. Uh, I like that advantage. You can answer a lot of questions that you don't even know you have to answer for mm-hmm. if you stay in the spirit. Yeah. But see, Martha... Martha got out there. She got all distracted. She wasn't. She wasn't hearing Jesus no more. She. I got to cook. I got to clean up. I got to get these. I got to get my my place set for for them to. But well, what did Jesus said? Mary. I mean Martha. Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. First off. We learned a long time ago that that's against the word. He told us to be careful for nothing. He told us to be anxious for nothing. Well, if you're supposed to be anxious for nothing and careful for nothing, then she's wrong right there because you worried and troubled about many things. Uh At that point, the Prince of Peace was right there, and she wasn't taking advantage of him. She was, at, she was in turmoil. But her sister said, no, I'm going to stay in peace. Because in the presence of Jesus, there's peace. Go over to... Yeah, okay. Um, God's word is, is all anyone needs to live successfully. Mary chose wisely. And we must also make the right choice. Uh, I'm going to go through a few scriptures here. Um, Joshua 1.8. So this book of the law should not depart uh, from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success, have good success. Which tells me that if you don't meditate in the word day and night, then you will not be prosperous and have good success. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a one, one way or the other in this scripture. This is the same man, I don't know if I have it in this lesson, but this is the same man who followed those instructions, and in Joshua 10 told the moon and the sun to stand still mm-hmm. until the battle was done. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you get a thought like that? How do you even think like that? Nobody had ever done that before. 
Nobody had, he had never seen anybody do that before. You know how he got it? Meditating in the Word. The Word told him what to do. The Word told him what to do. Uh, Matthew 6.33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added to you. Seek when? First. Make him number one priority. We, a lot of Christians, I'll say we, because it's a lot of Christians, make our job priority, make our family priority, make our spouse's priority, make everything priority but God. And if you make him priority, all the other things, again, will fall in line. Mm -hmm. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that you're working hard to do, working hard to get, all this stuff, will be added to you. Yes, Go after him first. Luke 17. No, you know what? Go to Ephesians 3.21. So you want to find the answers, and it's not the answers are not hard to find if you're looking in, looking in the right place. Right. You got to be looking in the right place. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to what power? The power is already in us. The power to succeed, the power to have the life of God is already in us. I mean, when I, when I, and I pray, I pray Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, and um, Colossians 1, was 119, I believe it is. So I pray those every morning mm -hmm. for me and Harmony. But I pray to them every morning because I want what that has. I want, I want that the exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think. Right. I want that in my life. Yes, if he's given it to me, see, there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that the church should have anything. Some Christians don't believe the church should have anything. Mm -hmm. And they get mad when, you, matter of fact, Jesus said that when you start to prosper, yeah. you are, there's going to be some persecution. Guess what? Some of it's coming from your brothers and sisters because uh -huh. they're mad. But he promised me that I can live exceedingly abundantly mm -hmm. above all that I can even ask or think. That's what he said. So if he promised it, why shouldn't I want it? Hey. Why shouldn't I want to walk in mm -hmm. what he promised me? He promised me long life. Why shouldn't I want to walk in long life? He promised me not only healing, but he promised me health. I mean, healing is great, but health is better. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't I want to walk in that? You got you to gotta start to realize that when these promises are made, that means that we are supposed to grab hold of them. Mm -hmm. uh, go over to Galatians 4. <coughs> I was reading this this morning, Galatians 4. But when the fullness of time had come, 4-4, four, four, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem, to redeem those um, who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of, as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, we are no longer a slave, but a son. Um, not only a slave, but a son. And if a son... An heir of God. A yeah. uh, who? Heir. An heir. An heir of God through Christ. But then, in, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those uh, which were by nature, not God's. Mm. Basically, what I'm saying right here is, though, you're an heir. Mm. This is ours. What God has is ours. Amen. Go to Romans 8. Go 
I know a lot of people don't like to hear my this kind of talk, but I don't care. It's mine. Yeah. And how are you ever going to have faith for it if you don't hear it? Yes. Faith, how does faith come? By hearing. by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Then if you never hear it, how can you have faith for it? Verse 17 of Romans 8 says that if children, and we are his children, mm -hmm. then we are heirs. Amen. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. If indeed we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. But we are heirs. Before I get back on my notes, we're going to go one more place. Go to John 16. John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things the Father has are mine. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I say he will take of mine and declare it or show it to you. Mm -hmm. Well, if all things the Father has are his, and we are joint heirs, why shouldn't they be ours? I mean, you look at the parable, the parable, the story that Jesus, I don't even know if it was a parable, I think it was, just a, it was a story. But um, about the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he wanted his now. And the Father gave it to him. But he dispersed the inheritance. Now, over in the Old Testament, I think in the book of Deuteronomy it was. I read it the other day. He was the younger son. The first son got his inheritance also. The first son always gets a double portion. Now, the first son apparently didn't know what he had because he was having a fit when his brother came home. And the father made a, gave, you know, made a party for him. The first son always had. But something was blocking his brain because he said, you wouldn't even give me a goat. To sell. Every goat, they're all yours. You could have celebrated any time you wanted to. Somehow, he couldn't see his inheritance, and the father divided the inheritance between them both. Well, we have an inheritance. All things are ours. But you know how you get those things? Words. Words. If you keep saying, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, what you going to have? You going to have, I don't have. If you keep saying, I have, I have, I have, guess who's going to work for you? You got the Holy Spirit, you got the angels, you got the Word of God, you got all this stuff, and it's coming to you. Right. It's coming. Right. I mean, I wish it came instantly, but then again, you don't want that negative coming instantly either. Because just because you talk death don't mean you're going to die tomorrow. But just because you talk life don't mean you're going to live tomorrow. It's got, it's a process. This whole thing, this whole thing that we're living in is a process. We are supposed to take the word, renew our minds, speak the word, and live the word. Go to Luke 17. 20 and 21. Now then, he was, he was asked by, a, by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. And he answered um, them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. 
He says that the kingdom of God is within you. But that means that kingdom that I'm seeking, I'm seeking what's already in me. The kingdom of God is already in me. I'm seeking to find, I'm looking. This right here is a treasury. A treasury of health, a treasury of peace, a treasury of money, a treasury of whatever you need. This right here is a treasury. But you got to dig and learn and, I mean, a kindergartner don't know what two plus two is unless you tell him. Unless you show, then you don't, he don't know until he actually figures it out. Because you can tell him two plus two equals four all day long, and he don't know what you're talking about. But when he can get here, get in that math book and see it and figure it out, then he knows. Well, when you can get in this word and see it and figure it out and walk in it, you know it's yours. And if you know it's yours, the biggest thing you have to do, and I'm not saying there's other things that won't have to be done in the process of whatever you're looking for, but the biggest thing you have to do is speak the words. Those words have, I mean, if God can say, let there be light and light appear, then we are made in his image and his likeness, what happens if we say something? Why do you think the devil is trying so hard to get you to say the wrong things? Because he wants to destroy you. Remember, he don't like you. And when you get word, when you get word in you, he can't stand you. Because first off, you're going to whip him. But second off, you're going to tell somebody else. So he definitely don't like you then. I mean, he comes immediately to steal the word. If that don't happen, then he brings up persecutions. If that don't happen, then he tries to get you with the cares of this world, the seedfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things. He has an arsenal of things that he tries to get you separated from the word with. And if you're wise, you will not let him do it. Because you can get to a point where you're persecution don't mean nothing to you. He already, if you're already in it, he can't, he can't just, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking through the um, Mark 4 uh, about the parable of the sower. But he already is, is beat on the end of the seed that fell on ground and, and the uh, birds came and ate it. He's already lost that. But then he's going to try and get you with persecution. He's going to try and get you because this stuff is working in your life and people don't like it. Now, and I'm not going to say everybody because some people are sitting back and looking at you and saying, I like what's going on here. But then you have others that aren't going to like it. So you're going to be persecuted. Guess what? Don't care. I want, what he, I want what he got. I'll bring it. Bring on the persecution. Paul said that when I'm weak, I'm strong. Bring the persecution. But then after all that, then he starts to put stuff in front of your face. He puts riches out there. And I'm going to get into that before we're done. When he put riches out there to make you chase after riches, if that won't work, he puts the cares of the world out there. I'm not saying you totally ignore what's going on out there because you can pray for stuff out there. I mean, my understanding is just now I was listening to um, the Watch, Watchman on the Wall um, news, and there's, stuff, there's some heavy stuff going on in Israel right now. Well, you can pray for Israel. You know, I'm not saying stick your head in the sand and, and, and stick your head in this book and have your head so far off this book that you can't figure out what's going on out there because people need prayer. Israel needs our prayer right now, you know. But if, you, if you're so, so locked into just this, now be careful who we watch. Be careful who you listen to. Amen. But there are Christian news outlets out there that you can find out what's going on. So I'm not saying stick your head in the sand. I'm saying be particular. And then when you do listen, be ready to pray. I mean, we're in a country right now that needs a whole lot of prayer with the stuff going on. So, but don't start, what a lot of people make the mistake of is they start talking about what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, instead of getting in this word, finding out how you can help to fix what's going on. Because 
God is not done with this country. This is the only country that's ever been established that people want to get away so they can worship God freely. You think God's going to forget that? People still want to be in a country that they can worship God freely. But if you get in there and start joining with the wrong thing, you're helping them. You're not helping God. Use your words wisely. And the easiest way, the two easiest ways to learn to use the word, your words wisely is through this book, through the Bible, and praying in the Holy Spirit. Those two things, because Paul instructed the um, Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians, he said, pray that you may interpret. So you can interpret what you've been saying in the spirit. Those are weapons. Those are things that we can use to advance us and the people in this world, because they need us. These people don't know, but they need us. Because without us, and they'll find out when the church gets raptured what kind of mess this thing's going to look like. Amen. They need us. That's the only thing from keeping this whole thing from falling apart is the Christians. But the kingdom of God is already here in us. We just got to dig it out and find out what's in us. So he says, seek first the kingdom of God. You're seeking what's in you. When he said that he can do exceedingly abundantly of all that we ask or think, it's because it's already in us. It's called bring it out. But if you're like Martha, how are you ever going to bring it out? You're easily distracted. You're worried. You, you're worried that the, that the food may not be done on time. You're worried about, I'm going to have a place full of hungry people. You know, cause I, and I need help. I need help. I need help. I'm like, Jesus said, no, Mary ain't getting up. Mary chose the best thing, and that's to listen to the word. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, 19. We all basically know this scripture, but uh, it's also good to keep our, put our eyes on it. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call the heaven and earth as witnesses um, today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Then he tells you what to choose. He says, choose life. Your choosing life doesn't just affect you. It says that both you and your descendants may live. See, what you, do, what you do passes on down to your descendants. Now, it may not, in some people's families, it may not look like it because them descendants are going the wrong direction. But you put a root in them. You put something for them to come back to. Amen. So never give up. You know, even though it doesn't look good, never give up on your children because you put a root in them. But he said for you to choose, what are you choosing today? Are you choosing life? Are you choosing death? One of the ways you choose is by the words that come out your mouth. Amen. Plain and simple. It's not God's fault when you're in a bad situation. It's not God's fault when you're in a good situation. God's sitting here just with his, basically his hands crossed saying, you choose. You know, oh, God, why did this happen to me? Well, what have you been talking? What have you been, what have you, how have you been acting? Because how you talk, your actions will go along with it. Did, what did you do? Now, I will admit, there's some stuff that comes along, and it, basically, you're, you're going to just sit there and be, it's a fight. I mean, in this country, our food is so bad. So, you know, uh, and I'm not, I'm not telling you that you can't eat anything, but the stuff they put in our food right now, you don't even know. You wish you, if you really knew what was in there, you wish you didn't have to eat any of it. 
all the all the steroids and the hormones and the all this stuff they're putting in the food. But that's why you have the word. Because the word can protect you from that stuff. Right. Amen. I mean, you eat, a, you eat some beef. You don't know what's going on. I mean, they could tell you. Now, I understand it's illegal for them to tell you this and, you don't, and they don't do it. But they, 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 organic. Yeah, but they said organic, but you can't really trust them to be, to, to be organic. But see, the one thing I can't trust is this. This will keep me healthy. You do everything you can eat nutritiously, but this will keep you healthy. But he gave us a choice. And he will not make that choice for you. You want life? How do you have life? You speak life. You want death? You may not want it, but you speak in death. You, you work in that way. Go to Proverbs 4. Four twenty. My son, attend to my words, incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Why do you do this? Why would, why would you do this? Why would you give attention to his words, incline your ears to his sayings? Do not let them depart out of your eyes, and you keep, keep them. Why would you keep them in the midst of your heart? Because they are life Amen. and health. And then he goes on to say, and then keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, I know I'm going over these scriptures over and over and over again, but we need it. We need it. A lot of this that, a lot of this that I'm saying to you, a lot of this I say to myself every single day. We need to hear this over and over and over until it becomes alive in us. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet uh, and let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. You want life and health? You have to pay attention to this word. Um, go to, this is the key to John 10.10. 10. Go to John 10.10. 10. See, Jesus wasn't lying when he said this. Even though a lot of people are not living this, that doesn't make him a liar. He says the thief does not come. He doesn't come except for three reasons. To steal, to kill, and destroy. That's all on his mind. Killing, stealing, killing, and destroying. He said, but I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Well, why aren't we living more of the abundant life? What did Proverbs tell us? Put Proverbs um, 4.22 back up there. The words. For they are life. What's life? His words. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Well, how are you going to live, how are you going to live John 10.10 10 if you won't live Proverbs 4.20 through 22? They, 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 they're inseparable. He gave you instructions. Silent way back, way back gave his instructions to what Jesus was talking about. When Jesus said that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The word of God is the key to our abundant life. Proverbs 18 So in the 20th verse, a man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, not with how hard he works. We got working ahead, we got a lot of us have working ahead of the word. 
From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. It's the words that you speak. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. You have power over death. And you have power to sustain life in you. It's in your tongue. Matthew 12. I'm trying to get across to us, including me, where the power is. I mean, I know it here, but I got to know it here. I got to know it in my heart, in my being, in, my, in the very depths of who I am. Matthew 12, starting at the 34th verse. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you have in there in abundance, that's what's coming out. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word men speak, men may speak, they will give account of on the day of judgment. For by your words you are justified, by your words you are condemned. Our words, whatever we're saying, um, be careful of idle words. Be careful of words that don't do nothing. He said you'll be judged for them. Luke 6.45. Anybody who's tired of hearing these scriptures, fine. Start living them. You start living them, you don't have to hear them. But if you ain't living them, you need to hear them. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart, it's uh, 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's going on in your life? Is good going on in your life or is evil going on in your life? It says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. He brings out, he brings out good. Evil man out of the evil treasure brings out evil. He's telling you you're choosing your life. He's telling you you cho you're choosing how to live. And I got, well, uh, bring that up in the uh, NLT. A good person produces good things from the treasury of, his, of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Enough said on that. Whatever's in there is coming out. In Proverbs 4.23, go to Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23, a lot of times this is left off when we're quoting this um, Proverbs um, scripture, but it says, "Keep your heart with all, um, or yeah, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life." We have to guard. Um, it says over in the Amplified, "Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above above all that you guard, for out of it flows the springs of life." Uh, bring it up in the NLT, please. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Now in the Passion Translation. So above all, guard um, the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. 
And one more scripture. I'll give, give you all these the colors so you can see. It gives you a better picture. The one thing about the English language, you can say a lot of things in a lot of different ways. Uh, bring that up in the message. Be vigilant. Watch over your heart. For that's where it starts. Amen. That's where it starts. That's where, that's where a life starts. And that's where death starts. That's where health starts. That's where abundance starts. That's where everything you want is already in here waiting to come out. Because yes, remember, go over to um, 1 Peter 123. Says that we that says that we have been born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Words are seed. It's a seed if you leave it in a bag, if you leave it on the shelf. Nothing. Seeds have to be planted. Seeds have to be, I mean, and it has to be planted, not just planted, but planted in good soil. Well, you determine the soil of your heart. You determine whether you have good soil, whether you have stony ground, or the other grounds that, that, that he talked about in, in um, Mark 4, or you also determine if you have good ground. Mm -hmm. Then, on top of that, you determine how much you get. Because even the people with good ground, they got... 30, 60, 100. Now, 30 ain't bad from zero. 30, 10 ain't bad from zero. Amen. I mean, if you're just getting started and you're getting 30, congratulations. But don't stop there. Shoot for the 100. Amen. Next step, you may get 60. Great. Congratulations. Don't stop there. Shoot for the 100. Shoot for the best. Shoot... Uh, one tool that is forgotten among Christians for the most part is our imaginations. What are you imagining? What are you thinking on? Are you, I mean, the world has learned to use imagination. I mean, they'll tell salesmen how to use their imagination to create sales opportunities. Because if you can see it, you can have it. Right. Amen. I mean, a lot of people are going under because they're using their imaginations the wrong way. Mm -hmm. They see themselves failing. I mean, I was working on a job yesterday, and normally it's a hard, I'm not gonna try to even describe what it is, but it's normally a hard job to do. I would not let that come out of my mouth. That's right. I refused. And that piece came out so easy. Almost, Almost came out like butter. Because I learned, I would not, I refuse to let that negative come out of my mouth. But you got to make that determination when things come up when, uh, you know, that I will not speak or I will speak the, what I want. But I will not speak that negative thing that you, don't talk, if you, if you don't want it, don't speak it. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as you can get it. If you don't want it, don't speak it. And if you want it, speak it. You can't get any more simpler than that. But words are seeds. Right. It took the word to get you saved. Mm -hmm. It took the word to get you filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It took you, takes word to get you healed. I mean, you can't, if you don't know by his stripes you were healed, you haven't, you know, or the other healing scriptures, I'm not just saying that one. But the other healing scriptures, how are you going to get healed? It takes word to get abundance. You know, my God says, Paul, you need according to the scripture and joy by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I shall not want. No word, how can you know that? Then how can you live in it? But those words have to be planted in good soil. 
if you will, first, if you won't plant them, you're not going to get a crop. And then if your heart is full of all this garbage, you can't get a crop. You need, a clean, you need clean soil. You need to get the garbage out so that the word can produce. Words are seeds. Because, uh, because of the words you're planting and allowing to be planted, that's what's going on in your heart. And not just the words you're speaking, the words you're listening to. Who are you listening to? I mean, I try, I try to um, make it my business to hear as much words as I can. That's right. And I'm getting further and further into hearing more and more words, less and less than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a process. Because you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. You want to look at anything and everything else other than the word. Because your flesh, he don't know what's good for him. Now, I'm, I'm not even talking about this. I'm talking about your, the, 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 the unrenewed mind. I'm not talking, he's, he's dead. If you leave here tomorrow, he drops to the ground. If you leave here, if I left here right now, boom, he hits the ground. There's no life in him. That's right. I'm talking about that. When I say the flesh, I'm really talking about that unrenewed mind. That's right. That's and that unrenewed mind will fight you, will fight you not to do this right, not to do that right. But when you get in the Word and you start feeding on the Word and you start doing and doing and doing, just living and living, 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 living in the Word, he got to shut up. Amen. He got to shut up. I've said this many times. Don't try to get rid of bad habits. Replace them with a habit of the Word. Yeah. And guess what? It's got to go. Jesus said, I come at the door, I, I, I'm knocking. Yeah. I come, matter of fact, go, go over there. Go over to um, Revelation 3.20. Instead of just quoting it. Yeah. Behold, uh, 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So, He's knocking. He's saying, let me in. Mm-hmm. He said, let me in. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. He ain't saying nothing about getting rid of the devil. <laughs> Not your job. Amen. You let the word in, guess who can't stay? Right. He can't stay. Right. Right. I mean, the Bible talks about that guy that that had the devil cast out of him, and the devil was running around all over the place. That demon was running around all over trying to find some place to go. He said, I'll go back home. <laughs> he went back home, found that joker clean. Uh, well. wasn't, nothing, wasn't nothing in it. Yep. It was clean, it was empty. And then when he came back, he brought in seven more. So that boy was eight times worse than he was before. Well, when you clean your house, put something in it. Amen. Amen. Put the word in it. And he talked about the rest of that verse, uh, that fourth chapter of Proverbs. He talked about your attention. He told me where to put your attention. You know, we saw that Martha did not put her attention in the right place. Martha was all over the place, everywhere but she needed to be. Because do you really think that the man that fed 5,000 with two, what was it, two loaves and three fish, whatever, whatever the amount was, do you think he couldn't have fed that pl- them in there? So her place was to take herself a seat. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Speak on, Jesus. I'm listening to you. You can take care of that. Mm-hmm. But I'm listening. That's what, that's what her sister did. Her sister said, talk. I'm going to listen. Mm-hmm. The book says, talk. Are we listening? He's talking to us through, his, through, this through the scripture. Through the scriptures, God is talking to us. Yes. Okay. I want to go touch on Mark 4:19.
So we left, we left off on, um, uh, well, let's go over there. Okay. We left off on talking about the cares of this world. Um, God knew that the cares of this world would threaten our peace. Mm -hmm. um, let's go, let me, in my notes, let me go up one paragraph. Once we enter into um, peace and rest, we know that the seed of the word has, been, has taken root. So you can't, you cannot really truly walk in peace until you uh, get to that point where, all right, God, I mean, even in your own personal life, there's something that you may need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that you say, okay, I've asked, I'm at rest, I'm waiting for you to bring, you know, what, whatever, has to, whatever you have to do, I'm waiting for you to bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. But you sit back and you rest. You sit back, go, to, go over to... Um, Hebrews 4. We'll go back, we'll get back to Mark 4. But there is a resting place for the children of God. There is a place where, oh, yeah. right. I'll, say, I'll say it this way, none of this matters. Amen. None of this, and nothing, I mean, if you look at Jesus, Jesus was always at peace. And you know enough of your Roman history to know that Rome was not a nice place. But it never bothered him. I mean, the corruption that was in that in, in 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 that kingdom. I mean, look at one look at one of the people he chose to be his disciple, uh, Matthew. Oh, yeah. Matthew was a tax collector. That's right. One of the corru most corrupt. <laughs> one of the most corrupt jobs out there at that time. But he told us. In Hebrews 4, let's start the second verse. For indeed the gospel is preached to them, preached to us as well as to them. But the word which we heard, which they, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Being not mixed with faith. When you hear the word, you got to mix faith with it. Not mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we do not, for we who believe, for we who have believed, right. get it right, do enter into rest. See, when you believe him, you can rest in him. Okay. It's when you don't believe is when you're not resting. Okay. And you have to move to that. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we were all taught wrong. Yes, I mean, our legit, illegitimate dad, Satan, taught us wrong. Which means that we have to relearn. Mm -hmm. We have to do a complete relearn. Yeah. And I mean, I thank God that I was not churched. I was a sinner. I ain't know nothing about church except for Christmas and Easter. Yeah. And that's because I had friends that would come get us, yeah. and my father made us go. <laughs> that's the only church I knew. Mm -hmm. And when I got saved, Thank God this ministry rose up as quickly as it did. Thank you. So I didn't have a chance to get, I was, I was saved in a, I'll say in a Baptist church, and I got nothing against the Baptists, nothing. But what was taught in that church, I thank God that I was not there that long, so I did not have that much to unlearn. Mm -hmm. That's the key for a lot of people. If you've been in a religion for a long time, you have to unlearn a lot of that. Because a lot of people, when you preach certain things in this book, they'll call it heresy. Oh, yeah. even, though you, even though they read the same words you read, their mind has not been renewed, and they'll call it heresy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, why, I'm, why is it heresy? If it's in the book, it must be right. <laughs> but then if it must be right, then you must be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> let, every, let God be true and every man a liar. Yeah, that's what you said. That was if... If it's in this book, it must be right. 
Um, okay. Then the book says that when I mix faith with the word, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be at rest. Yeah. Amen. See, Israel wouldn't mix faith mm -hmm. with the word. Israel chose unbelief. That's right. And it cost them uh, 40 years of their lives. 40 years. Mm -hmm. And all those that were older, that was, what, 20 years old and older, they all died. So it cost them big time mm -hmm. not mixing with faith. Because right. if you read over there, when they went in, when you read, in, if you read over in Joshua, Rahab says, what took you, basically paraphrasing, what took you so long? Uh, yeah. Oh, they were scared. They heard what, they heard what right. God had done to Egypt. And they were scared. Oh, yeah. I mean, they probably would have, if they walked over and crossed that Jordan right then and there, they probably would have gave up without a fight. Without a fight. Without a fight. Amen. But because of unbelief, it took them 40 years, 40 years to get there. For he who believed, mm -hmm. for we who believe do enter into that rest, as he has, as he said. So I swore in my wrath that they should not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. This plan was already done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God had already made the plan for them to go in and take that land. Right. It was done from the foundation, but they wouldn't believe. I mean, we, we, most of us all know Numbers 13. Mm -hmm. Two believed, ten didn't. The majority is not always right. Amen. Amen. The majority said, we can't go in. Two said, they're bred for us. Oh, yeah. Their defense is gone. Mm -hmm. We can take this thing. Right. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day, in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. As a matter of fact, let's, let's put this up. I have the NIV up there in this. Or oh, I believe I do anyway. I may, I may not, but I believe I do. No, if, I, if not, I can. Oh, here we go. Let's go to verse 9. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Uh, we're supposed to be resting. Amen. What, happened on, what happened on the Sabbath? The Sabbath, God said, the end of, end of six days, God said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy what I just did. Yeah. So he rested on the seventh day. Well, we're supposed to rest. Amen. We're supposed to be resting on the seventh day. Our seventh, we live in the seventh day. We live in the rest. Amen. Amen. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Mm -hmm. 11. And let us therefore, this is our work. This is our labor. This is what we're supposed to do. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest mm -hmm. so that no one will perish by following the example of disobedience. Our work is to stay in rest. Because you know, we all know circumstances will do everything it can to pull you out of the rest for what you're believing for, especially if it's something, I'll say, I'll use the word desperate. If it's something that maybe you, maybe you need such and such a money in such and such a time. Every circumstance will tell you it ain't happening. Every single one. But that's when you labor. All right. You've asked God for it. God ain't a liar. You labor mm -hmm. to stay in that rest. Over in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, it talks about having that confidence. When you pray or when you say, you're supposed to have confidence that it's going to come to pass. I'm about to run myself out of time again. But watch the cares of this world. 
They have no business being our cares. Matter of fact, go to, um, oh, where is it? Hebrews 12. Well, one through three. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, it was just, we were just in the 11th verse of the hall, what we call the hall of fame of faith, mm-hmm. of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Well, the cares of this world is a weight. Amen. The cares of this world is a weight. It'll weigh you down. Mm. And the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. In other words, keeping your eye on him. How do you keep your eye on Jesus? You keep your eye on the word. You keep your eye on the word. That's how you keep your eye on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set down the right hand uh, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility against, uh, or from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. We are to lay aside all this stuff. We are to put it aside. Don't let it weigh us down. Let's go to the deceitfulness of riches. The seedfulness of riches comes from the spirit of mammon, which is behind money. This spirit tries to lure us away from the word by telling us that we can trust money more than God. However, the love of money is the root of all evil, Mm -hmm. as stated in um, 1 Timothy 6.10. I go over to Matthew 6. See, we have to guard and watch and watch over to make sure that we do not chase after money. Mm-hmm. Why should we be chased, chasing after something we already have? Okay. It's in us. Mm-hmm. Wealth and prosperity is already in us. Mm-hmm. So why should we, we why should we be chasing it? But he said, Jesus specifically said here, no one can serve two masters. Now you're gonna have to make a choice. Mm-hmm. Is your master money or is your master God? Because he's trying his best to make the spirit of mammon, which is demonic spirit, Uh is trying his best to make us chase money. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve money and God. If you serve God, you can get money. But you can't serve God and mammon money. It don't work. The word despise in this verse means to pay little attention to. Uh In other words, whichever one you choose, that's the one you're going to pay attention to. If you choose money, you're going to pay, it won't happen all at once, but you will spend less and less and less time with God Mm -hmm. because you're spending more and more time chasing that money. Mm -hmm. If you chase after God, you spend less and less time chasing after money. Yes. You want to be worried about money. Because first off, uh, if you read in Revelation and see how much God got and we're his heir, right. uh, why are you worried about money? He told us in Matthew 6, don't be talking about how we going to eat, how we going to put, what clothes we going to put on this and that. He says the Father knows you need that stuff. He says that stuff the Gentiles seek, uh, search after. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's why he says seek first the kingdom of God right. and his righteousness and all these things be added to you. Yes. And the key in that scripture, again, if you look at it, I'm not going to go in now, I don't have any time, but go through, go through Mark, uh, Matthew 6, uh, 24 through 32. 
One of the keys in that scripture is the word saying. Why take ye thought saying? What's on your mind? What's on your mind? What do you, what, I mean, what are you thinking about? Because what you're thinking about is coming out your mouth. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seems right unto man. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. You don't know which way to go. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit will tell you which way to go. And there's no way in the world the Holy Spirit going to tell you to chase money. So I got the money you need. You follow me. You learn how to get what, you learn how to get from me what you need. That's what he's saying. You learn, you learn to get, you learn it. I'll teach you. Mm-hmm. He is our teacher. He is the one that teaches. He's supposed to, he took Jesus' place in our life when Jesus went to the Father. Right. He said, I will send you a comforter. Mm-hmm. And he didn't just say, he said he will live in you. But it is not even a temporary dwelling. He said forever. Mm-hmm. So he's always there. Mm-hmm. Always there. Okay, Mark 4. And we're going to see what happens. They were put to the test. They were put to the test. That very same day. 435. Now, he has spent, remember, Jesus spent all day teaching. He spent all day, he, besides the parable of the sower, or the seed, he was teaching, all, you know, he spent all day teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, I like, I, I really, I, I, in our Christianity right now, you couldn't listen to Jesus. Because you get mad if you go past an hour. Jesus and Paul spoke all day. Paul spoke so long, Joker fell out a window, died. Paul raised him up and went back to speaking again. Yeah, he did. All that long. But in this Christianity, in a lot of places, 15 minutes is too long. Mm. So, <laughs> in Jesus' day, that boy spoke, our brother, spoke all day long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, he spoke so long one time that he had to eat. It was in his heart to feed the people. Yeah. He, it was in his heart to feed the people. He spoke that long. Mm-hmm. But on the same night, uh, on the same day, when it was evening, so it, he spoke all day long. It was, it was evening now. It was nighttime. Uh, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. What did he say? Let us. Cross over cross to the other side. To the other side. Mm-hmm. That was his words. He put his words out there. Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, um, they took him along in a um, boat as he was, and other little boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, um, waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. And he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they woke him, saying, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose, rebuked the wind, said to the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And but he said to them, Why were you so fearful? How is it that you had no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The point I want to bring out here is Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. He did not say, let us go out to the middle and sink. He didn't care how he was getting to the other side. He was at total peace. He was sitting back there asleep. Both filling up, he sleep. Because he has confidence that they go going to the other side. If the angels got to pick that boat up and carry it over, he didn't care. As far as he was concerned, we going to the other side. Well, we ought to have the same mind. When we speak, 
we go on to the other side. Yes. No matter what, these are circumstances. These are contrary circumstances to what he said. Mm -hmm. They did not stand on what he said. Because Peter could have very easily got up and said the same thing Jesus said. Uh -huh. He was right there in the back of the boat to back him up. Yes, sir. Jesus, I mean, Peter, very, he could have very easily said, peace, be still, because we're going to the other side. Mm -hmm. The master has already said it. He could have done that. Other things could have happened. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the angel could have picked the boat up and <laughs> took it over there. Yes. But Jesus has full confidence in his words. He had no thought. Mm -hmm. he, wasn't, he wasn't getting up. He, until they woke him up. Now, when you can get, when, you, when we can walk in that kind of peace, uh -huh. that we, we are not moved, like you said, Ron, there, that we are not moved, yeah. no matter what the circumstances that, mm -hmm. want, that want to take away uh -huh. from us, and you know the only way they take, us, take away from us mm -hmm. is if we speak mm -hmm. the circumstances. They spoke. We gonna sink. Amen. We gonna perish. Yes. We didn't hear them words come out of Jesus' mouth. Mm -hmm. We did not hear them words. Yes. Well, we gotta start to live the same way. Yes. We gotta live the same way that no matter what we no see. Matter. Remember, we don't walk by faith; we walk by sight. Right. No matter what we see, mm. what did we say? Walk by what did he tell Jairus? Paraphrase, shh, only believe. He had already said, you come to my house, lay hands on my daughter, and she shall live. Uh -huh. If he said anything else, that would have killed the whole thing. That would have killed the whole thing. It's the same thing for us. When you speak it, shh. The only thing that should be coming out of your mouth is thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I receive. Yeah. It's mine. I take it. Let me shut up. <laughs> Let me shut up. I mean, it's hard, it, 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 it's hard to stop. It's hard to put the brakes on. It's so much in my spirit right now. And we're not done with this. We're actually, we're actually done. This is, four, this is part four of CD1. <laughs> but I, have, like I, said, I, I, I say it all the time. I have a ball up here. I enjoy this. I mean, I wish I could do this every day. <laughs> and maybe one day I will. Amen. I've not heard. I've not heard the call. But one day maybe I will. Amen. But I'm thankful for the time I get. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. For he is our teacher and he is our guide. And he is the one sent along to help us. And thank you that he, hi, that he helped me today. <laughs> I thank you for that, Father. I thank you, Father, that the angels are protecting our pastor and also protecting us as we go along throughout our day. I thank you, Father, that you loved us that much. And we have access to the host of heaven. I, I, I remember in the Old Testament, they call uh, the Lord of the Sabaoth, the Lord of the host of heaven. And we have access to that host. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you, Father. I just praise you, I worship you, I love you, Father. I thank you for those that thought it wise to come out and hear your word. And I, again, I'm thankful for being the one to bring your word. And I just love you. Um, now, Father, I thank you that the angels out there to protect us as we go to our separate destinations. Um, in Jesus' name, I give thanks. Amen.